there's always more to find And I found love is with me God will go before me And God will come behind God is always with me Why you live to my Throws a breeze or trouble water Headlights when I can't see You're the road I'm traveling on You're the lamp unto my feet Through the valleys, through the mountains You're the God who's there for me to the Bishop is Speaking. My name is Bishop M.J. Rivers and I am the host. Tonight we are honored to have Andrew Kurtz. He was born in Morgantown, Pennsylvania. He serves as a worship leader for C3 Church in Clayton, North Carolina under Pastor Matt and Martha Fry. He has a Bachelor's of Science in Biblical Studies from Logos Christian College. Welcome to the show, Andrew. Thank you. It's so good to be here. Yes, yes. It was a pleasure meeting you at the uh, strategic planning for the uh, North Carolina uh, Gospel Announcers Guild. Uh, yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I, um, I really just started writing and recording my own music, or really recording my own music. I've been writing such a long time. And um, as one of my first things as, you know, kind of stepping into this role of an artist, I went to the um, North Carolina Gospel Announcers Guild planning meeting, like you mentioned, and my eyes were just open to a whole new world of what the music industry looks like and how I fit into that. And, um, and it was really cool just to see that, you know, in the, the NC um, Gospel Announcers Guild, it really, people were so welcoming. I mean, it was my first time, nobody knew me, but, um, but people were so friendly, so welcoming, and it was just really, really a great experience for me, my, for my first thing. And so it was an honor to meet you there. Mm -hmm. uh, so many other people I got to meet, and so, you know, now here we are. Mm -hmm. um, as a result of that. So thank you so much for having me a part of the show today. Thank you. And that's what it's all about. It's about networking in the kingdom. You know, I thought it was very interesting to find out that you have a bachelor's of studies, a bachelor of science in biblical studies. Yes. Um, tell me a little bit, how does your education help your ministry? Well, you know, I think that there is... Um, there's a difference between artists, uh, you know, Christian artists, musically speaking, and pastors. Artists are not pastors. And pastors, you know, even worship pastors are not always artists. And so I really think that having this degree and being trained as a minister really helps me bring both of those things together. That I am a musical artist but I really bring a ministry portion and aspect to, um, to what I do as an artist. And I think it helps me so much in being 
theologically correct, being um, biblically sound, but then also in, you know, in how I treat people. And mm -hmm. in every way, you know, my relationship with God, more than just my degree, shapes not just my music, but who I am as a person. Well said. Tell me a little bit about your intentional uh, vision and how you encourage people. Yeah, so my biggest passion in life is to encourage and inspire people. And I feel like, you know, the world is already so heavy. You know, it, it's already so, there's already so much depression and anxiety and just heaviness, a weight in the world. And I believe that that's a spiritual thing. And, you know, so the world doesn't need um, necessarily always to tell them what they're doing wrong. I think a lot of people know what's wrong. But, you know, I think if we can encourage and inspire people of, you know, in their relationship with the Lord, encourage them in their, their journey in life, mm -hmm. you know, and just what they're doing, I feel like that's what people need. And that will speak volumes to people. You know, even people that are far from the Lord, if we can encourage them, I believe that that opens the door for us to be able to maybe share our faith. And so that is what I set out to do, is just to encourage and inspire everybody I meet. Anybody that meets me or anybody that I meet, I want them to leave feeling better than, than before we met. Mm -hmm. And you are a real worship leader. Tell me um, about your experience as the worship leader. Yeah, so after Bible school, I was hired immediately as the worship minister at C3 Church under, um, as you mentioned, Pastor Matt and Martha Fry, mm -hmm. um, which is just outside of Raleigh. And so I've been doing that for about six years now, and it is just one of the greatest privileges of my life. You know, I, I was listening to somebody um, talk, a, a, a person I'm connected with um, in a network, and they said, something that has stuck with me ever since. And what they said was that becoming president of the United States would be a demotion compared to this great privilege of ministry. And I have carried that with me, and it is a huge privilege. One of the greatest honors that I think anybody can possibly imagine is being in ministry and being a part of ministry. And so I've had the honor to be able to do that, and I'm so excited for what that looks like even in the future. Mm, well, that brings us right to your recently released first recording entitled Mile After Mile. What's mm -hmm. the story behind that project? Well, you know, I think even, um, like I was talking about, there's so much heaviness and anxiety and depression in the world. And I went through a season where that was me. You know, I felt heavy. I felt an extreme amount of anxiety in my life. And it was a very dark time for me. It was a very hard time. There were, there were a lot of um, external factors that made life very difficult for me during that time. And so um, I wrote, I, well, really, I dug into the Word of God and I just kept coming back to Psalm 23. You know, and especially that part that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And I wasn't, you know, dying or anything, but I was walking through a hard time. And it was so comforting for me to know that, you know what, God is with me. Mm -hmm. Every step of the journey, the hard moments, the good moments, through the valleys, through the mountains. And that's really where that song, Mile After Mile, and then, of course, the rest of the EP as well, came from. Just my relationship with God. Every song to me is like a prayer. Mm -hmm. And it's, the EP is basically the overflow of my prayers. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the song Mercy. Mercy Says, yes. Um, Mercy Says. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Mercy Says, um, like I mentioned, there was I was in a dark time in my life. And I think everybody can relate to the feeling of sometimes feeling like you're just not good enough. You just mm -hmm. don't have what it takes. And I felt that way. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess in my head, I was saying all these things like, you know, I'm not good enough. I'm, I'm not cut out for this. I don't have what it takes to be able to do this. I, God, how much longer can I possibly go? And, um, you know, I had, 
I saw all the, the wrong in me. I saw all the, you know, all the things I didn't like about myself. You know, Andrew, you're not smart enough. You're not good looking enough. You're, you're not talented enough, you know, and so on and so forth. But I always come back to the Word of God. And so I just sat down and I started writing, you know what? Because of God's mercy, He says that I belong. I am a part of His family. Mm -hmm. Because of God's mercy, He says I am wanted. I am chosen. I am part of a royal priesthood, a holy nation. I am set apart. And from those statements, I really felt like this was becoming a song. And, you know, the chorus of Mercy Says took shape. You know, Mercy says that I'm, I belong. Mercy says that I'm not too far gone. I might be knocked down, but I can get up again. Mm -hmm. That my breakthrough is coming. Yes. And so that's really where it came from. And as healing as it was for me to write those words, my deepest prayer is that when people listen to it, that they find the same healing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sensing um, a kind of understanding of, um, of how preaching works and how songwriting works. Because um, I'm hearing that uh, from your own experiences that you write your songs. And let me uh -huh. give you a a glimpse in good preaching on Sunday morning sometime we're preaching to ourselves okay we're going through things uh, but we recognize that we are not alone when we pray we say our father uh -huh. not my father not your father but our father we've got to recognize that we are in a larger group and some of us are going through the same things. Amen. And I just thought so I would uh, put my little two cents in there because I felt happy over here. <laughs> 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 but, you know, let me get in, okay? All right. Uh, God has used Andrew as the worship leader, drawing people closer, closer to himself. Uh, do you see that as a larger part of your ministry to draw people closer to God? Absolutely. I feel like the role of a worship leader is not to be a performer. And um, so many times I think it gets reduced to that. Just, mm -hmm. you know, okay, what songs are we doing on Sunday? And, you know, all right, like, you know, getting everything together and like, is the, is the bass line perfect? You know, and oh, you know, who's playing keyboard and, and all that stuff. But the role of a worship leader is really to step out of the way and connect the hearts of man mm -hmm. to the heart of God. Mm -hmm. And um, it's never something that we can do without having already done it personally mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I really feel like being a worship leader has helped me on this journey in getting a vision for, you know what, I want, I want when people hear my music, I want for them to hear God in it. Mm -hmm. I want for them to hear God's voice speaking to them. Mm -hmm. this, the song Mercy Says is a great example of when, I, when, I, um, when people hear that song, I want people to hear, to walk away with, you know what? My breakthrough is coming. That's I it. don't have to give up. That's it. And that's so it. that's what it's all about for mm -hmm. me. So, so, so how long have you been singing? Well, I, um, that's, that's an interesting question. I guess, you know, I've been singing my whole life. I love to sing. I always have. Mm -hmm. But as a worship leader, I've been singing for six years. And then professionally, you know, as a recording artist, I've been singing for like a month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, well, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. So uh, is this your first album? Yes. Very good. And so what is your heart's desire? What, what do you want the album to accomplish? Well, really... That's a question I've asked myself a lot. You know, I feel like God gave me an assignment to record this album, that He put these songs in me. And so, what's the goal here? And really, my goal is just that as many people as possible would hear these words, would understand these songs, and would be touched and drawn into a closer relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Do you do you do you sing most of them at the uh, C three church? 
You know, I haven't sung even one of them at C3 yet. Okay, okay. We, um, at C3, we recorded our own album um, okay. back in the fall. And it was, it's been so amazing just to be a part of, you know, two recording projects. And, um, and so we're doing our own songs for the very first time at C3. And it is the coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, yeah, I've been kind of playing double duty. Uh, you know, worship pastor, writing and recording for um, the church, and then, you know, also doing my own thing that I really felt the Lord led me to do. Mm -hmm. So has it been really different from your background at the North Carolina Governor's School for Choral Music? Mm -hmm. Has that been a paradigm shift? Has it been similar to your training? Has your training been realistic, or did you come into the real world and you find out it's totally different out there? Yeah. Well, honestly, a little bit of all of the above. You know, I think that every step in our journey, you know, God wastes nothing. He uses all of it for a purpose to prepare us for what He's leading us to next. Mm -hmm. And so I do feel that everything I've been through has prepared me for where I am now. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, there are some things that I wish I had learned earlier. Mm -hmm. And whether it was that God wanted to teach them to me in this season, or I just was a dense person and didn't learn it the first go around and God had to try to bring it around again. Was it more about the business side or the artist side? Which yeah, side? so I feel like for the artist side, I'm, I'm pretty, that comes more naturally to me. Um, it's easy for me to try to write a lot of songs, and it's easy for me to think of words. It's easy for me to be creative, and it's easy for me to be spiritual. I don't expect anything from anybody that I'm not doing myself. If I expect people to be drawn into a deeper relationship with the Lord, well, I have to be in a deep relationship with the Lord. And so it's easy for me to go to that place as an artist and to write songs, to come up with melodies and all that stuff. The business side of things is much harder for me. And, um, and thank God, he has brought so many amazing people alongside me. I have a manager now. Her name is Sanofia Tate. Mm -hmm. She is amazing, better than blessed artist management. She has helped me more than words can describe with mm -hmm. the business side of things and really helping me navigate a world that I'm unfamiliar with. Mm -hmm. and, and then I have my parents too. My parents are pure gold. I wish everybody had parents like mine. Very good, very good. Yes, that, that support system. As a matter of fact, uh, your manager found me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Your, your manager hooked you up with me. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and let me say that um, when I was at the uh, conference, uh, I met his manager, uh, Sanofia Tate, and uh, she told me about Andrew and I told her that I had a show, and so we scheduled it, and I'm so glad that, uh, that you made it on the show. I think you're a very stand-up guy. Uh, tell me <laughs> about you. some of your hobbies. Wow. Well, I consider myself a very artsy person. Um, I, you know, this whole Enneagram test personality thing has been going around, and so I'm a type four. Uh, Enneagram type four, which is now the, you lost me. You know, I'm I a know, preacher, right? I know. I, it's so you know, it's basically this personality type where you um, you want to be individual, and it's like the creative people that they you know they have their own thing, and so I'm always finding new things to do. For example, I love art. I love mm. painting. I love drawing. I've done that most of my life, but recently I took up um, woodworking. I really enjoy that at carpentry, really. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy that. Um, I've, I've made a couple tables, a bed, a couple beds, actually. Um, and uh, it's also something that I really enjoy doing with my brother. And then in addition to those things, I love hiking, being outdoors, nature, ki kayaking. Um, and then, of course, spending time with my family. That's one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Amen. Well, uh I know you're the worship minister in your, but uh, tell me more about your recorded music. Yes, well, um, so for Mile After Mile, um, we've talked a little bit about that, 
and what that EP means to me. That's kind of, um, it's interesting describing to people the difference like, oh wait, so you're a worship leader, yes, with Real Hope Worship at C3 Church. Real Hope Worship is really just what we titled our band. And, um, and uh, so it's been really, really cool being a part of that. But then, you know, oh, but you have your own stuff too? So like, which one is it? Well, it's, it's just both. And, um, and so with Real Hope Worship, we released our very, very first EP in the fall, in November, um, called Moving Mountains. And so it's been really, really cool just to be able to be a part of that, mm -hmm. um, but then lead my team in that and allow other people to shine. Um, there are some amazing, amazing people on the team. Two young guys, Caleb and Wyatt, um, Caleb Fry, he's the pastor's son, and then Wyatt Dersham, they really, I am just blown away by how they handled that album. And honestly, they did more writing on that than I did. And, um, and they did so, so much work to make that happen. And it's, it's just amazing to see on a new project, something that we've never done before as a church, to see how our team stepped up and to see how they really, God used their gifts and they had their moment to shine. And it's really, really cool. The title track, Moving Mountains, Caleb wrote that. And um, it's just, it's an amazing song. I, I deeply encourage everybody to hear it. It talks about how God is the God who moves our mountains. Yes, and, um, and I know, amen. And it's, it's a message in a song. And so that's been really, really amazing to be a part of and to lead. Um, and then, like I said, you know, we've talked about my, my own music as well. So I have both going on simultaneously. And we would like to hear Mr. Andrew Kurtz in the studio. Buckle your seat belts. Here he comes.
Thank you for tuning in to The Bishop is Speaking. I want to thank Mr. Andrew Kurtz for coming on the show. Uh, we have his information on the bottom of the screen. Listen, he's a stand-up guy. Uh, he's booking invitations. Uh, give him a call and uh, you'll be blessed.